Alright, so your tusks should look something like this once the griffin sepia has dried. Really nice, um, aged looking, um, I don't know what you call it, like I almost ivory. Um, the griffin sepia really, really does its job really well. So, so thumbs up, Games Workshop, for that. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it some color. We're gonna take dark flesh and we're gonna water it down a whole lot and then we're going to just glaze it over the tip. And what we're actually doing is working our way to a really, really dark um, finish right at the tip. Dark flesh is a little too red though, and we're going more towards like a brown and black, but this is just a good um, starting color for our little horn tip here. So you get something, something like that. brown and actually yeah well, let's not do the Calvin brown I changed my mind I'm looking at the box art right now and it looks like it just goes from there to black so let's take our bad app black next and skip the brown and just um, work our way towards the tip Um, not coming out quite the way I expected it, so I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and um, possibly go over it one more time with the dark flesh. And probably that's what you have to do, you have to wait for it to uh, just get a little bit more dry. So we'll reapply our dark flesh, we'll wait for the dark flesh to dry. Um, meanwhile what we can do with our Bad at Black is we can go over the rest of the metallics and all of the um, all of the bandages with our banda black. Let me just hit this top of this side here. Yeah, we're gonna let that dry. So that looks really super nice. <clears throat> While that's drying, we're just gonna take our bad at black and go over all of the silver and all of the bandages.
and it's gonna give a really good uh, just weather beaten dirty look that we're gonna build upon with our rust effects in just a little while because I'm hungry. That dark flesh looks like barbecue sauce. same thing for this side and what I'm also going to do is paint these uh, belts at the bottom as well. Didn't think about those. Just give them a little little touch of that uh, black and there you go. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. So at this point you should have something that looks like this and what we're going to do in this next step is take you from this to this. Um, I darkened the tip and did more of a gradual highlight and I'm going to show you how to get this uh, gradual fade of the bone with the shading um, for the tusk. I think it looks really really neat. So what you're going to need are bleached bone skull white and the ever popular denim stone you're also going to need at some point griffin sepia but not right now at the very beginning <clears throat> so i'll show you how i do the beginning and um kind of lead you through a couple steps of it and then um let you finish and we'll jump ahead to the next part of the video to save time uh, okay First, I had to turn on the air conditioner. Sorry about that. It was getting a little, little hot up in here. So, um, but first, let's also do the, do the tip of the horn. So we're gonna take chaos black and dark flesh, and we're gonna kind of be wet blending them both together. So I'm gonna take a little bit of chaos black, water it down, dip my tip, uh, the tip of my brush into water, and then just put it over. Almost like our, our bad at black was, but when you use actual paint, like uh, a chaos black, then you get a much better, um, you get more pigment. It doesn't spread out as, as um, the wash does. Also because the wash goes on flat surfaces and doesn't cover as well, it's better to use uh, pigment when you're a, a more of a paint kind of, um, approach. I'm also going to do some dark flesh in between these two bandages to be consistent with the other horn. So as you can see the Chaos Black is already drying really really nicely and uh, doing a nice shading on, on the tip there. <coughs> Yeah, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to let that dry for a bit. We're going to take our denim stone and we're going to start highlighting the uh, bone. 
the way we're going to do this is we're going to water down our denim stone, thin it down a little bit because it's so thick, and um, wipe most of it off onto our napkin. Now we're going to do uh, strokes, vertical strokes, or I guess they would be horizontal strokes, but I'm holding it at an angle where it's kind of like going from the top to the bottom, up to down. And I'm going from the, from the base, and I'm leaving a little bit of shading up at the top. If you want to try this out, I suggest practicing it on the side that's going to be on the inside of the iron blaster before starting on the outside. What that means is go, you know, this, you see this is the side that hooks into the cannon and the chariot. So um, if, you're, if you're not sure, try your technique on this side before attempting to do the, um, the side that shows to the viewer. Oh, there goes the dog. So I'm going to do a couple of these and then let you finish. It's because this is a pretty time uh, consuming step and you don't have to do it the griffin sepia wash looks fine but um, you know me <coughs> if you feel the, the paint clumping then you just want to get right in there and um, spread it out the worst thing you can do is let it, let it clump while you move on. Also, what I do is I try to follow the, the bone ridge, the ridge structure. So where it points, I bring it down, and then where it goes back up, I bring it back up. I don't even, um, unease, even unevenly paint, which is why I don't swipe it across like this, because I think you get more of that, that shading kind of effect when you go with the actual ridge structure. And just keep going back to the denim stone to reload your brush. Dip it in the water if you need to remix the paint or get it moist again. I'll do a couple more of these and then you know what I think I'll do? I will show you the next step with the bleached bone and the skull white and then let you continue from there. Then we'll all do the, uh, the final wash together. Also, you see like there are a lot of these chips and scrapes and scratches so what I do is I go around them as much as possible so you can still see the shading in there and that is what's going to be picked up by the eye when you've got the model down on the field. Okay so I am going to just say that this was uh, my finished product. I finished this step, move on to the next one. And in the next one, we're going to be using bleached bone. Okay, so bleached bone, and we're doing the exact same thing, but we're leaving the denim stone. <coughs> we're leaving the denim stone uh, showing as much as possible. And we're also leaving the shading from the original Griffin Sepia. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll work from the top this time. Mainly you're creating the optical illusion that the closer you get to the shading of the next ridge, the lighter it's getting. So the lightest point, which is going to be a mixture of bleached bone and skull white, is going to be right before the break in between the, the plates. 
and that's what the eye is going to get drawn to that that um, contrast between the, the light tone and the, um, the shading of the ridge right underneath underneath it but you can't do it if you don't have that gradual fade Okay, so you get something like that. And I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go one more. Oh, let me turn off the light so you can kind of see. Eh, not really the auto. Auto light doesn't really help. But um, you wanna add a little bit of white now. Skull white to the mix. And I would say like maybe one to one, 50% of the mix should be bleach bone, 50% skull white. And both of these paints, at least the old GW paint range, they are very, um, very clumpy. So you need lots of uh, thinning medium or, uh, you know, water to, to mix it to a good consistency where it'll just go on like I keep hearing and using the term soy milk as as a good as a good uh, consistency. You don't want it thick on your brush. That's the last thing you want. So here we're just kind of hitting hitting the very very bottoms. Alright, I'm going to let you guys finish this and we'll come back and I'll show you uh, what my thing over here looks like once we've gotten that to that last step. And then we're going to go into the uh, shades with the Griffin Sepia. You can tell that the, you could see individual vertical um, paint stroke lines and that's kind of the effect you want. You want to see individual lines. This also is a great technique to use with Tyranids, whatever your color fading scheme is to go from light or dark at the top to light at the very edge of the ridge of the plate and then back down to dark. So uh, why don't you guys go ahead and continue on. I am going to uh, cut tape now and we'll get back together when um, we're ready to wash. Alright, so here our model is completely uh, highlighted up, just about, ready for the wash. Ah, a little bit wiped off down here. So um, we have two things we're going to do before we, before we wash it. The first thing is, or, or was that a gash? Oh, that was, that was supposed to be there. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to find any places that have um, got <coughs> some paint where they're not supposed to be. And we're just gonna color them in with Devlin mud. For example, at the breaks between the plates, you might get a little bit of the lighter color down where it shouldn't be. For example, let's look here. <coughs> right over here. Got some bleached bone there, so I'm just gonna take my Devlin mud and do a thin line. Actually, I think it's just going to be safer to just do do the line, the Devlin mud line over everything. This will save you the headache and the hassle later on of um, having some that are darker than others. So just take your Devlin mud and go for all of the little breaks in between the plates and also hit any um, any cracks and chips as well it's really nice you'll notice that the Devlin mud 
um, really tones down that bleached bone. Sorry about that, uh, both the dog and that mold line on the bottom, just couldn't get it. like it should be good. So the next step is we're gonna take, oh I see a little piece that I missed. We're gonna take Griffin Sepia and we are going to really thin it down. I mean seriously thin down that Griffin Sepia so that it's almost like just um, just about like water on your brush. You want enough pigment that it'll stain the the highlights but you don't want it to be very strong of a color and then you just want to wash it over the whole length of, um, of the tusks. Oops! So what I do whenever I have to do work this um, you know intricate is I just dip my brush in water and put all that water right in the lid especially with these old paint pots where the, the lids just don't stay open. Mix it up around and then use whatever comes on the brush. Test it out again on the inside to make sure it's the consistency you want and yeah it looks good. And then just wash it. You can kind of tell how the uh, Tyranid design kind of carried over into, into this. I think even that's starting to get a little bit too um, too painty, so I'm gonna just get some water from my water cup and just add it to the tip of my brush. And there you see how it really dilutes dilutes the wash. So this is where it's really, really good that we didn't um, glue our sub-assemblies together at the very beginning, because um, you can imagine just how hard it would be to get at all of these areas that was already on the model. Okay, and there you have it. <coughs> <coughs> I'm gonna let that wash dry for a little while while we attack the fine details on this guy over here, the dried one. So I'm gonna be taking my chainmail and we're gonna be highlighting, just like we did before, the rivets and all of the fine details. So you really wanna go into a um, smaller brush for this. You wanna hit all the all the areas if it's standing up like this then you hit any any bits of the model that would be touched by the light Just do a little bit of this and then come back once I'm finished highlighting so that we can all do the vertigris together. So attack the edges of 
all these metal plates. And then when looking at it from the front, you want to go to take a look at where the um, where the light would naturally hit it. So I'm thinking like right over here. And then just do a little bit of a dry brush to accentuate, put some of that metal pigment right back on the front of it. You know what I mean? Then go back to hitting the sides over here. Yeah, it's almost like the, the dry brush is uh, not as effective. It's not as effective, but it's it's much easier, so you can do either or. I'm gonna try to stick to the hand painting. But either method would work. Okay, hey, I'm gonna go and finish this and then we'll get back together and finish this model with uh, some rust and verdigris. Yeah, there's some gold on here. See you guys in a bit. All right guys, there's only one more thing that I did and um, before deciding that I'm probably gonna break this up into two videos, uh, which you probably know already. <coughs> that is that I, um, gloss varnished the tips of each horn to give it that shine and I also used um, Camry Brown to paint the bandages up at the top to give it a distinct look because the um, Denim Stone even with the Bad Eye Black Wash looked a little bit too much like the tusk for my for my tastes so here you go here you have your two uh, iron blaster tusks I'm gonna cut this video now. The last part of the video is uh, gonna be um, probably two parted. Two parts is we're going to take a look at the details such as the jaw that goes above the cannon, the little saber tusk pelt that goes on top of the cannon, and the little uh, knoblar driver which I can't seem to find now, and then we're gonna glue it all together. So stay tuned for that and um, Thanks for following this project. I can't believe it's taken so much, uh, so long, but I think it's gonna, the detail is really gonna show in the finished product.